gentlemen, and welcome here to the Mayor Center on the campus of the University of Dallas for the second game of our doubleheader today between University of Dallas Crusaders and our visiting team today, the Mountaineers of Shriner University. I'm Kevin McGurk, here to bring you the action for today's game. Thank you so much for joining us for game two. Give you a quick look at what happened in our first game today. So the men's teams played right before this game. That game was at 4 o'clock, ended about 20 minutes ago. And in that game, Schreiner won by the score of 87 to 79. Crusaders, Jai Love and Jack Boyle each had over 20 points in that game. Boyle with 25 points, Love with 22 points. And the Mountaineers also had two players over 20 points. Darian Gibson had 27, and Camden Ross had 24 points in game one. And as we take a look at the two teams who are about to play. First, take a look at the Mountaineers who come into today's game 11-11 11 and 11 with a conference record of 8-5. Of and five. In the month of February, they are 2-1 and one with a win against Centenary, a win against Austin College, and then a loss against Trinity. On the Crusader side, they come into today 0-3 in the month of February, losing to Southwestern and Austin College on the road. And then last night, in a tough overtime loss to Texas Lutheran. And as we take a look at some of our stats for the year, leading scorers, and Sanai McPherson for the Crusaders, number two, has been the leading scorer for the Crusaders and for the conference, scoring 18.5 points a game. She's also currently the 38th highest scorer in the NCAA right now. And as we take a look at the top scorers on the Mountaineer side. Leading scorer for the Mountaineers is number 20, Demoria Miles. She is averaging 10.6 points per game. Gabby Ivara and Jocelyn Hernandez right behind her with 9.2 and 9.3 points per game respectively. As we take a very brief look at the last time these two teams played, we'll have to go back a season for that. We'll have to go back two seasons for that. As last time these two teams played, we're in the 1920 season before before uh, the start of COVID. Last time these two teams played, Schreiner won by the score of 67 to 31. And last time these two teams played here, Schreiner won 75 to 57. So the starting lineups for our two teams tonight. For Schreiner, it'll be starting at guard, number 11, Azale Pirtle. At guard, number 15, Gabby Ivara. At guard, number 20, Demoria Miles. At forward, number 23, Andrea Salazar. And at guard, number 24, Jocelyn Hernandez. For the Crusaders, it will be starting at guard number two, Sinai McPherson. 
at guard number 13, Amber Turner. At guard number 23, Adrian Alvarez. At forward number 24, Alyssa Sullivan. And at forward number 50, Amani Harden. All right, well, the team slowly making their way out onto the court. Dallas will be attacking left to right to start the game. The Mountaineers attacking right to left. Looks like our jump will be Harden versus Im Ivara. Dallas wearing blue in today's game. The Mountaineers wearing white. And here we go as the Mountaineers win the tip. Baseline jumper is good by Ivara as the Mountaineers come out with a full court press trying to trap the Crusaders. Dallas gets it into the front court and will set up the half court offense. Alvarez drifting to the right over to the corner, McPherson Ball back to McPherson. Gets a screen. Stop over to Alyssa Sullivan, who shoots for three. She'll miss. And that will be rebounded by the Mountaineers. Over to the corner. Now swings to the top. Drive by Hernandez, who will kick. Shoot for three. No good. Rebounded by Harden. That ball poked away for a second, almost stolen by the Mountaineers, but McPherson running free, ball over to Turner, into the middle, puts up the shot, and Dallas finally gets on the board, tying the game at two.
Shot for three by Miles, and Demoria Miles hits the first three-pointer of the game. McPherson over to Sullivan. Turner to Alvarez. The press is broken. Jump shot, no good. Up quickly the other way. The Mountaineers into the middle. That shot's going to be lost, but picked up by Ivara. Basket is in. Timeout taken by the Crusaders. So mentioned in the pregame that Dallas played Shriner in the first game tonight in the for the men's team. And looking at the men's standings, Dallas in a very precarious spot, but still with a chance to make it to the SCAC tournament. Southwestern lost to Trinity earlier, and that dropped them to five and nine. Dallas also is five and nine, and they are jockeying for that sixth spot to be the last team in to the SCAC tournament, both teams with two games left. So we'll see what will happen down the stretch. Dallas will give you what uh, their schedule is in a little while. But the Crusaders trying to make it to the tournament under first year head coach Matt Gron. And they'll have to get by Southwestern to do it. As Sanai McPherson goes down the middle and will get fouled. Pearson heading to the line for two. She's a 65.3% free throw shooter, 98 of 150. And the first one is up and in. Second one is in. Ball into the middle, and quick passing by the Mountaineers gets them a good shot look, but misses the shot and the putback attempt as McPherson goes coast to coast and will be fouled. Another chance for two coming up. Foul is going to be on number 11, Pirtle. Free throw is good, three in a row by McPherson. And another for McPherson. And that's, that's stopped by Harden as Pirtle was trying to find the cutter, but Harden got her arm in the way. Dallas comes up with the basketball, and we're going to have a foul away from the ball. Our offensive foul on Imani Harden. Ball. 
Ball in the hands of Salazar. Kick over to the corner now. Hernandez. Shot for three. Ma no, Miles fakes the three. Shot for three from the other side is no good by Ivara. Offensive rebound and put back no good by Pirtle. That'll be out of bounds. Last touched by the Mountaineers. Dallas with the basketball. Full court pressure still by the Mountaineers. And that's going to be stolen. Ball in the hands of Miles driving and scoring. As Adrian Alvarez trying to get by Hernandez. McPherson to Alvarez. Down low baseline jumper Sullivan and she knocks it down. First basket of the game for Alyssa Sullivan. 9-8 our score. Mountaineers with the lead and the ball. Approaching five minutes to go in the first quarter. Shot for three. No good. Rebounded by Sullivan. Both teams sending in some subs up to come in on the next dead ball. McPherson to Alvarez. Tries to get a screen from Harden. Double team. Pick and roll. Down low. Turner now. Driving in. Chucks up a shot. Little bit of an ill-advised shot right there. Didn't really have a whole lot of control. Her feet weren't set very well. As Hernandez now on the other end misses offensive re excuse me, defensive rebound by Harden. And that's going to be stolen away by Pirtle. Trying to take McPherson, gets by and scores. McPherson with the ball, surveying. Over to Alvarez, shot for three, and she drains it. Tying the game at 11. Drive, banking it in, and Miles will score two. Seven points now for Demoria Miles. Dallas trying to break the press. They get it over to Alvarez into the front court. Sullivan, and that's going to be stolen. Ivara steals the pass intended for Turner. Up quickly to Pirtle, and she'll score on the other end. Dallas gets by the pressure as Harden will get to the basket, taking on Salazar. Into the corner, shot for three. Miles misses. McPherson gets the rebound. She wants to run with it. Finds Sullivan wide open. And she lays it in for two. Tied at 15, 2.30 to go in the first. Jump shot, misses wide. Sullivan fighting, excuse me, Harden fighting for the rebound, but she will travel as Pirtle was in pursuit. And we'll have a whole mess of subs coming in. get you who those subs were in just one second. Baseline drive and steal by Caitlin Smith, one of the subs who came in for Dallas.
Shot for three made by the Crusaders as the subs were for Schreiner were number two, Miranda Vallejo, number three, Naria Bugs, number 12, Rodnishia McMillan, and number 22, Elisa Peralta. For the Crusaders, it was number five, Caitlin Smith, number 31, Camille Fowler, and number 45, Casey Willis. Traveling, I believe, was the call on the floor. I think it was not actually sure what the call on the floor was a minute ago. Anyway, Dallas with the lead, 21-15. Shot is up and no good. Rebounded by Caitlin Smith. McPherson gets open, drives to the basket. She's going to be fouled. Doing well from the line so far, four for four. Foul is gonna be on Miranda Vallejo, her first of the game. Free throw by McPherson is no good. And the second free throw is up and good. <laughs> 22, 15 hour score. And that shot is gonna be blocked by Fowler, but she stepped out of bounds. Shot for three is going to be no good. And that's going to be thrown away. Turnover by Dallas. And that's going to be turned over by the Mountaineers. Three seconds to go. Smith gets to half court, puts up a desperation heave, and that will do it. So after one quarter of play, Dallas leads 22 to 15. And our first quarter stats for the Crusaders, they had 22 points on seven of 12 shooting, three of five from the three-point line and five of six from the foul line. For Schreiner, they scored 15 points on seven of 22, one of nine from beyond the arc and no free throws as of yet. For Dallas, they had six turnovers Eight rebounds, no offensive, all defensive. Six assists, two block shots, two steals, and one foul. For Schreiner, they had three turnovers, six rebounds, two offensive, four defensive, four assists, two block shots, four steals, and three fouls.
And one thing I will say really quickly, if I can find it again. that I actually did overlook the two games that Shriner and Dallas played last year. Both of those were actually played at Shriner during the COVID season. Those two games on February 5th and 6th were a Shriner win 76-46 and a Dallas win 54-52. As Dallas starts the second quarter off with the first point, they now turn the ball over. Last three-point shot was made by, excuse me, it was a two-point shot made by Alyssa Sullivan. That three is going to be missed. And we had a couple of subs during the break. Dallas has all five of their starters back in the game. A couple of starters came back in for Schreiner. And in for the first time also, number 10, Alyssa Vera, in for the Mountaineers. As it's right now... Vallejo, Vera, McMillan, Ivara, and Hernandez, the five on the floor for Schreiner, and McPherson, Turner, Alvarez, Sullivan, and Harden, the five on the floor for Dallas. As McPherson pump fakes drives, finds Harden, and she lays it in for two, increasing the Dallas lead to 11. 8.20 to go here in the second quarter. And Harden with the defense on McMillan, who got stuck, turns the ball over. And now Dallas a chance to increase their run. McPherson for three. And Dallas with a 29-15 lead. Timeout called by the Mountaineers. Mountaineers have not yet scored in the second quarter. Dallas leading the frame seven to nothing. Last time Schreiner scored was a layup by Priddle, Pirtle, excuse me. At 323 left in the first, made it 15 to 11. Since then, over the last approximately five and a half minutes, Dallas is on a an 18-0 run. So during our next time out, we'll get you our first SCAC scoreboard update. Beginning of the spring sports, and we're going to have a lot of sports to tell you about. Baseball, lacrosse, softball, tennis, basketball, lots of sports going on around the SCAC today as Dallas gets another stop 
Schreiner struggling quite a bit right now. As Alvarez gets a screen, dumps it over to Harden, finds McPherson open in the corner, shot for three is good. And that's going to be out of bounds. Sullivan poked her hand in there, and I thought that I thought that had hit off of Ivara's leg out of bounds. The referee said it didn't. As Dallas breaking the pressure. Sullivan cutting down the middle, puts up the shot, and that's going to be an offensive foul on Sullivan. Baseline jumper and a finally a basket for the Mountaineers who went about seven minutes without scoring. That's going to be out of bounds off of Dallas. Correction, they went about six and a half minutes without scoring. Gabby Ivara had a basket prior to the one that we just saw. And that baseline jumper is hit by Vallejo, so the Shriner offense now getting three baskets in the last minute and a half and make that four baskets. They are coming back to life as Dallas just barely avoids a turnover, and that is in and out, unfortunate for McPherson. It looked like for sure she had two more points. That foul is going to be on Alvarez. And subs in for Dallas. It will be Smith, Willis, and Fowler. First free throw on the way is no good for Vera, who this season is an 82.9% free throw shooter, 29 of 35, as she goes one for two. Dallas getting stuck again and almost stolen again. Batted out of bounds by Schreiner. Smith with the ball. Smith to the basket. Misses the bank shot. And Schreiner. Fast break the other way. Basket by Ivara. And a lead that was 17 at one point is now down to six. As it's now Schreiner who's on a big run, 11 points in a row in the last two and a half minutes. And that's going to be a foul on Casey Willis. Sub into the game is number 21, Nyla Reigns. 
Vieira goes to the bench. Ball in the front court. Kick over to the far wing. Shot for three, miss. Offensive rebound, Triner. Hernandez to the corner. Long two as in by Vallejo. And the Mountaineers bring it back to a two possession game. 32 to 28. Currently the Mountaineers on a 13-0 run. That started with the layup by Gabby Ivara with 7.06 to go in the second. About three minutes later, and we're now down to four. Pressure again by the Mountaineers. Dallas gets it into the offensive half of the court. McPherson hands it off to Fowler. Back to McPherson. Down low to Willis, who goes to the basket, misses the layup. And quickly the other way, Hernandez puts up the shot, misses. McPherson grabs it. She's off to the races, trailing her Vallejo to the basket. Scoring goes McPherson. Breaking the Crusader drought. Drive shot, no good. Offensive rebound by Ivara. Now Vallejo for three. That'll miss. And almost kept alive by the Mountaineers as the hustle play by Salazar leads to a foul, I think. I didn't see a foul go up on the board, but I don't know why else play would have stopped. As Imani Hardin drives to the basket, she misses the shot. And finally, it goes up on the board. The foul was on Gabby Ivara. As Alvarez has the ball poked away from her, going to the basket, missing the shot was bugged. Number three, Naraya Bugs. Almost had a steal and score. As the Crusaders will inbound the ball. Trap coming on McPherson. She gets stuck and throws it away. Pressure effective by the Mountaineers. The Crusaders have had trouble against the full court trap defense all season. As Hernandez kicks it, baseline jumper, no good. Amber Turner with the rebound. Turner slows it up, gives it to McPherson, who is directing traffic. Over to Alvarez, works way to the middle, finds Harden, but she's not ready for the ball. 
Turner with the steal. As Staters probing the perimeter. Turner gets by her defender, goes to the basket, puts up the shot behind her head, misses. It's going to be picked up by Hernandez, who almost loses it. That shot is swatted away by Harden. And poked out of bounds by Turner. As McPherson misses the poke, trying to get it away from Hurdle. Jumper by Vallejo, misses the shot. Sullivan with the rebound. And we're going to get a foul on Bug. Pearson to Alvarez, finds Harden, who's double team, escapes the double team, puts up the shot, misses. Under a minute to go, six point game, Dallas with the lead. Shot and score, as I think Sullivan's going to get tagged for this. Basket counts. Foul is on Sullivan. And a free throw on the way for Bugs, who this season is a 56.1% free throw shooter, 76, 7, 37 of 66. As that shot goes in, we're down to a one possession game, 34 to 31. And Dallas turns it over as the Mountaineers a chance to tie the game before halftime. Can't quite take it down for one last shot. About five and a half seconds difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Vallejo for three, and Vallejo knocks it down. Six on the shot clock. McPherson dribbling through defender. She gets stuck. Ball's loose. Tries to find Harden, and that's out of bounds, but time runs out. So at halftime, our score, Dallas 34, Shriner 34. And for our halftime stats, for the Mountaineers, they have 34 points on 15 of 41 shooting, 2 of 14 from the three-point line, and 2 of 3 from the foul line. For Dallas, they have 34 points on 12 of 26 shooting. Five of nine from beyond the arc and five of six from the charity stripe. For the Mountaineers, they have six turnovers, 17 rebounds, five offensive, 12 defensive, 10 assists, no block shots, eight steals, and six fouls. For Dallas, they have 14 turnovers, 16 rebounds, no offensive, all defensive, 10 assists, four block shots, four steals, and five fouls. Our game high leaders so far, Sanai McPherson leading all players in scoring with 16 points, four of five from the field, three for three from beyond the arc, and five of six from the foul line. 
top scorer for Shriner is Gabby Avara with eight points doing her damage on four of nine from the field. One missed three, no free throws attempted. Our leading rebounder for the game is also Gabby Avara. She has seven, three offensive, four defensive. Amani Hardin leading the rebounds for Dallas. She has four. Zanaya McPherson leading all players with four assists right now. Azale Pirtle and Jocelyn Hernandez, each with three assists, leading Schreiner. And we have several players with two steals in the game. Vallejo, Miles, Bugs, and Harden. And Harden also leading all players in block shots with two. So I'll give you our SCAC scoreboard update. As from around the SCAC, so Shriner in baseball, they have a double header going on. They won their first game against Stevenson, three to one. They are ahead in the top of the ninth, nine to eight. Dallas played Hendricks College on the road at 12 and three. No scores being reported yet. St. Thomas lost to Houston Victoria. Excuse me, St. Thomas is losing to Houston Victoria, seven to three right now, bottom of the seventh inning. They also won All right, there's a slight issue on the SCAC website. It's, there are two games for St. Thomas listed as currently ongoing. So one of those, I'm sure, is a final. I think the 7-3 to three game was the final. 7-3 to three loss to Houston Victoria and the top of the 7th and 8 nothing lead on Houston Victoria. Centenary also playing Mississippi University for women. That game right now does not appear to be reporting any scores. That game started at 5. In basketball, in basketball, as we mentioned earlier, Shriner beating Dallas 87 to 79 in the men's game, and Trinity beating Southwestern 85 to 65. Well, we also had some men's tennis matches going on today. Shriner playing New Mexico Military Institute Junior College. Trinity defeated East Texas Baptist earlier today. St. Thomas played St. Mary's. Austin College and UTD. Mary Harden Baylor and Trinity. Shriner and Howard Payne. And then Southwestern and North Carolina Wesleyan. Uh, no results listed for any of those games. In softball, Texas Lutheran beat Whitworth 9-1 to in a five-inning run rule game. Pacific Lutheran beat Shriner 14 to 5. Austin College defeated Ozark 8 to 2. Shriner looks like they just beat Pacific Lutheran 13 to 10 in the second game. TLU Looks like they're about to defeat Whitworth 4-2 in their second game. Houston Victoria defeated St. Thomas 5-2. Ozarks in their second game with Austin won 17 to nothing. Uh, no score being reported yet for the second St. Thomas Houston Victoria game. And the University of Dallas also having a couple of games against Hendricks today. 
falling in both games, 11 to 6 and then 12 to 7. Uh, women's tennis, a lot of the same matches we saw earlier. Schreiner versus New Mexico Military Institute. Trinity defeating East Texas Baptist, and then also St. Thomas versus St. Mary's, Austin versus UTB, Mary Harden Baylor versus Trinity, and Triner versus Howard Payne. So it looks like we still have maybe a couple of games still going on. Some games still not reporting scores yet, but as soon as we learn anything new, we will let you know. So we have just under eight minutes to go until we start the second half. We will take a break and come back with the second half right after this short break.
Welcome back here to the Mayor Center as we're about to start half number two. And Shriner will start with the basketball. As that will go off the foot of Miles, but Shriner hangs on to the ball, and Shriner scoring the opening basket of the half, taking their first lead since the first quarter, as that's going to be turned over by Alvarez. So the five on the floor for each team. Looks like the starters for both teams. Turtle, Ivara, Mayo, Salazar, and Hernandez as that shot for three is hit by Miles. And then McPherson, Turner, Alvarez, Sullivan, and Harden. The five on the floor for Dallas. Sullivan to Turner, shot for three up and no good. And she uh, gets her own rebound. First offensive rebound by Dallas so far. And that's going to be almost stolen. Dallas hangs on hard into the basket, and she lays it in for two. Getting the friendly roll. Six points now for Imani Harden. As that's going to go through the hands of Ivara, Dallas the other way, McPherson to the basket, puts up the shot, misses, but a foul. First free throw is good by McPherson. And she knocks them both through. Going right through the defense and almost turning the ball over went Hernandez, shot from the corner, missed for three. As Harden comes away with the rebound. And that's gonna be turned over. Pearson throwing it out of bounds, and Schreiner has the basketball across the midline. Shot for three from the far wing is good by Miles. And that's going to be deflected out of bounds by Ivara. Alvarez Puts up the shot, banks it in for two. Looked like she had gotten stuck, but she makes something out of nothing. Ball to the elbow, now to the far side, or the near side, excuse me. Shot missed, Harden with the rebound. McPherson, pass up to Sullivan. Finds Harden. Trying to find a shot and does. Tough shot being guarded by Salazar. 
And Dallas ties the game at 42. Hernandez for three, misses. Offensive rebound, not gathered by Schreiner, but rather McPherson comes away with the rebound for Dallas. Alvarez looking around, drives to her right, to the basket, puts up the shot, and lays it in, and Dallas retakes the lead. Right down the middle, almost stolen, and that's going to be a travel. Alvarez nearly just ripped it right out of the hands of Pirtle. And Camille Fowler will come into the game, as will Casey Willis. Sullivan steps out of bounds, trying to bulldoze past Hernandez, but Hernandez held her ground, forcing Sullivan to detour out of bounds. And so it will be a turnover against the Crusaders. And that's going to be turned over right back by Schreiner. And that's going to be taken away. The trap defense effective again by the Mountaineers. Jump shot from beyond the free throw line is going to be missed by McMillan, who just subbed into the game, as well as Peralta. Sullivan dribbling around over to Fowler now. Sullivan now tries to drive the baseline, puts up the runner, misses, rebounded by McMillan. Down the middle, missed by Hernandez. Sullivan drives the left side of the lane. She's going to be fouled as she tumbles out of bounds. Foul is going to be on Ivara. That's going to be her third foul. And it's been a relatively clean half. That's just the second foul of the half so far. Both fouls have been on the Mountaineers. And so, as we get ready for some free throws to come up, Take a look at Alyssa Sullivan's free throw shooting on the season. And so, a quick touch on the quick touch on the men's standings right now. So, as I understand the SCAC tiebreaker rules, if a team ends the season tied, the tiebreaker starts with going to the top of the conference standing, and the tiebreaker is determined by, their, by each team's record against the top team going all the way down until the tie is broken. So as of right now, Dallas has, Dallas and Southwestern have both lost twice to St. Thomas, who's at the top of the SCAC. It would be followed next by Schreiner, who Southwestern has lost both games against Schreiner, as Sullivan hits that first free throw. Before I continue about the standings, 
as she makes the second one. Sullivan was a 39 for uh, 57 free throw shooter on the year, 68 of 68.4%. So Southwestern has lost both games against Shriner. Dallas still has a game to play against Shriner. The next team down, I believe, is Trinity, who Southwestern has lost both games against Trinity. Dallas still a game against Trinity. The next two teams would be Centenary and TLU. Now. Southwestern still has a game against Centenary to go as Sullivan hits that three-pointer. Dallas, uh, I believe, is one and one against Centenary this year. Yeah, they, they have one win, one loss against Centenary. Southwestern still to play Centenary. And Dallas also with a win against TLU. They are one and one against TLU, so is Southwestern. The teams after that are Southwestern and Dallas, and that just leaves Colorado. Which Jump shot in by Sullivan, which Dallas has lost to Colorado once. Southwestern has won once, but to a degree that doesn't actually matter. Because if both teams were to lose out, it would be the tiebreaker against Setnary that should give the Crusaders that sixth seed. If Dallas if both teams were to win out, if both teams were to win out, the wins again, well, you wouldn't need both, but whichever team was ahead of the other, whether it was Shriner or Trinity, a win against either team would give Dallas a tiebreaker there. So right now, if I am understanding the tiebreakers correctly, Dallas is actually, the men's team is actually, to some degree, in control of their 2022 SCAC playoff destiny. That being said, they're playing two of the top three teams in the conference, both of whom have winning SCAC records. And winning records overall, Trinity 18 and four this year, 10 and three in the conference, Shriner 13 and 10 this year, 11 and three in the conference, compared to the two games that Southwestern will be playing, which is against Centenary, who are 11 and 10 this year with a 6 and 7 record, and Austin College, who are 5 and 17 overall with a 2 and 11 conference record. Now, the game against Centenary is going to be in Georgetown so a couple of so both of these next two games will be home games for the Pirates which is a big boost to them Dallas has one on the road and one at home at Shriner and then home versus Trinity so it'll be interesting to see how this next week will shape up for the Crusaders as Dallas right now has an eight point lead on the Mountaineers, 56 to 48. And Dallas to inbound the ball underneath, 
the officials discussing. We might have a shooting foul. And it looks like we are going to have a shooting foul. That is on number 12, McMillian. So Sinai McPherson, who is 9 of 10 from the line, now goes 10 of 11. 24 points for McPherson. Another 20-plus point game, as she's had many of those this year. Second one is also up and in. She's also had some very big free-throw shooting performances this year. And she's having another one of them right now. I might even go as far to say this has just been so far Sanai McPherson's best shooting performance in terms of percentage this year. Ball to be taken out of bounds. McPherson shooting right now has only missed one shot from the floor. She's 5 of 6 from the field, 4 of 4 from beyond the arc, 11 of 12 from the three-point line. And she averages 18.3 shots per game. She's only taken six shots from the floor so far. As that's going to be missed by Amber Turner. Layup on the other end by Pirtle as the ball almost did not go in, but got a friendly roll, and that is thrown away by Dallas now. McPherson's career high, which came back on January 16th, I think that is a error shot is going to be missed ball is free Dallas comes up with the ball and we're going to have free throws on the other end for Alyssa Sullivan Excuse me, Adrian Alvarez will be the one taking these free throws. She's a 72.2% free throw shooter, 39 of 54. And going back to what I was saying about McPherson as Alvarez lines up for this shot. Misses. That career game, 35 points back on January 16th. She went 9 of 25 from the field, 4 of 15 from the floor, and shot a great 13 of 14 from the free throw line. On a similar pace from the free throw line right now as Aubrey Ridnauer comes in for Amani Hardin. But the big difference between that game and this game right now, as that three is drained by Peralta, is that in that game, McPherson took her third highest shot total of the year, which was 25, and the most amount of three-pointers of the year at 15. Today, just six and five, respectively, as we're down to five seconds to go, as McPherson is going to foul Peralta.
first free throw, no good. Peralta, 69.2% free throw shooter, 27 of 39. And she'll go one for two, 3.3 seconds on the clock. Ball to Alvarez at half court, and that shot is in. And the official says it counts. I thought the buzzer went off first. It is good. And three extra points for Dallas right before the half. And so our stats after three quarters for the Crusaders, 61 points on 20 of 38 shooting, 8 of 13 from the three-point line, and 13 of 16 from the foul line. For Schreiner, 56 points on 24 of 59 shooting, 5 of 21 from three, and 3 of 5 from the line. For Dallas, they have 18 turnovers, 25 rebounds, one offensive, 24 defensive, 16 assists, four block shots, five steals, and 10 fouls. For Schreiner, they have nine turnovers, 21 rebounds, five offensive, 16 defensive, six assists, no block shots, six steals, and 11 fouls. So Dallas to inbound it, and that's almost stolen as it's knocked out of bounds by Peralta. That's almost stolen again, but this time Peralta is going to get whistled for the foul. Driving the lane, Alvarez, she misses the shot. And that's going to be a foul on Amani Hardin, who is surprisingly not in foul trouble in this game. Only two fouls for the game. Amani Hardin usually has three or four by this point and has had to sit on the bench for stretches of the game. Tonight, not so much. Now that's going to be a foul. And just like that, Harden is now on her third foul. First free throw is no good as McMillian this season is a 41.9% free throw shooter 18 of 43 and she'll go one for two Shot made by Alvarez, and that's going to be out of bounds on Pirtle. 
And looking at Harden this year, she's fouled out of five games. She's had four fouls in a game eight times and three fouls in a game three times. So in the 21 games she's played this year, she's only not had three fouls or more twice. As Alvarez hits another shot on the Crusaders' side. Foul now on defense by Alvarez. Shot for three, misses, rebounded by Fowler. And that's going to be a foul by Pirtle. Second foul of the quarter. Second foul of the quarter on the Mountaineers. Second of the game on Pirtle. And that's going to be turned over, stolen by Pirtle. To the basket and scoring goes Pirtle. 66-59 our score, approaching eight minutes to go in the game. Dallas with the lead. Jump shot from the near side baseline. Scoring goes Sullivan and that's going to be a foul on Sullivan fourth foul of the quarter for Dallas second of the game for Sullivan so free throws from here on out for the Mountaineers as Pirtle was wide open and missed that shot right in front of the basket and big miss shot right there for the Mountaineers three for Alvarez as she drains it from deep 12 point lead now for Dallas building up that lead again like they had in the first half and that will cause a timeout to be called by the Mountaineers event is the women's game between Trinity and Southwestern 83-54 the lead for Trinity shot for three is good by Miles Fowler with the ball driving puts up the shot she's going to be fouled by Ivara
That's going to be the fourth on Gabby Ivara. And take a look at Fowler's free throw shooting this year, 71.4%, 35 of 49 as she misses the first one. Misses them both. So that's going to be rebounded by Peralta. Up the court quickly and dishing and scoring Salazar. Alvarez now the other way. Puts up the shot. Rebounded by McPherson. Fowler resetting the offense. She gets a Green picks up her dribble, finds McPherson. Long three by McPherson. That's going to miss. First mi missed three-pointer of the game for Sinai McPherson. Other way, layup and one for Demoria Miles. That's now 18 points for her. As Imani Hardin will come in for Camille Fowler. First free throw of the game coming for Miles. She's a 78.3% free throw shooter, 47 of 60. And she'll convert the three-point play, bringing it to a four-point game, 71-67, 6.07 to go here in the fourth quarter. Sullivan almost gets trapped, but gets it to McPherson. Long pass to Turner, underneath to Harden. Throws it away, turnover. As Miles comes the other way, stopped by McPherson, but passes it off to Vallejo, who lays it in for two. Schreiner brings it back down to a two-point game as McPherson dribbles past the double team. Finds Sullivan to the basket, misses the shot. Offensive rebound, Harden, and she's going to be fouled. Foul is on Miles, her second, and that will be the, I believe, 15 foul. Oh, the fourth team foul, it looks like, but the next one will be free throws anyway. Zamani Hardin misses her first free throw. And I believe that was, it was, her first free throw attempt of the game. Harden missing them both. And out of bounds off of Amber Turner. Baseline jumper and in by Vallejo, and we're tied again. 71-71, 5.20 to go. McPherson trying to make something happen. Gets through three defenders before she is stopped by Miles and calls timeout. So Dallas to inbound the ball, Sullivan into 
Alvarez, and that I was very dangerously close to being over and back. Long three by Alvarez, misses Turner with the offensive rebound, but she travels. As we have five minutes to go. And that goes through the hands of Miles. Gets by the two Dallas defenders who swarm to her. Hits the jump shot. And now Demoria Miles has 21 points as she puts the Mountaineers back ahead, 73-71. McPherson gets stuck. That goes through the hands of Alvarez. Vallejo up to Miles. Miles thought about driving on Sullivan, but pulls away. That's blocked by Harden. Ball on the floor, and time out, and that, I think, was actually very fortunate for Dallas. As it looked like, I think, Amani Harden could have gotten whistled for a foul. And we would have had some free throws for the Mountaineers. As it is, the Mountaineers will be taking the ball out of bounds after this timeout with the lead. 73-71, 4.21 to go here in this, this one. And Dallas has actually been shooting very well tonight. 51% from the field, 58% from the three-point line. Not a great free throw shooting percentage, 13 of 20. Schreiner also not great at five of eight. But they have taken 12 less free throws than the Crusaders have. 26%, six of 23 from the three-point line for the Mountaineers. And they're shooting 44.9% from the field. But the big difference in the game, Dallas 22 turnovers, Schreiner 10. Dallas also winning the rebound game 30 to 25. And they also have five block shots. So by all accounts, they're playing better than Schreiner except in possessing the ball. And those 12 turnovers is costing the Crusaders right now as they're only down by two, but we'll see what happens down the stretch. If Dallas can maintain possession of the ball the way that they've been shooting, rebounding, and playing defense, they should be able to come away with this one, but will the defensive pressure by the Mountaineers be enough to overcome all of the other facets of the Crusaders advantage in this game as Imani Harden is fouled she'll go to the line for two foul was on Salazar and that is the first foul of the game on Salazar as Harden misses her first free throw and misses them both as Bugs up the floor to Peralta. And that's almost lost by the Mountaineers. 11 on the shot clock. Ball to Vallejo. Shot for three from the far wing, and she knocks it down. Caitlin Smith in for Dallas. In for McPherson as that's tipped and stolen. And traveling called on the Mountaineers. And that's huge for Dallas. Getting the ball right back. As the momentum definitely on the Mountaineers' side at the moment. Another turnover and potential score could have been lethal. 
as Harden gets free. She's going to be fouled on her way to the basket. That looks like, I think, Peralta. Which, if it is, that will be her third foul. It is on Peralta. So third foul on Elisa Peralta. First free throw made by Harden. Brings it to a four-point game. Nine points now for Harden. And she hits them both. Back to one possession. Ten points for Harden. 3.23 to go. The Mountaineers with the lead and the ball. Dallas in a 3-2 defense, it looks like. Trying to put a little bit extra defense on the perimeter. Shriners hit a couple of big threes in the last couple of minutes, and here's an attempt for another one, but that's missed. Offensive rebound by Peralta. As she gets stuck, has to pass it into the middle. Salazar loses it. Alvarez, and that's going to be a block on Bugs. Fourth foul on Naraya Bugs. And Adrian Alvarez will go to the line for two. So far, she is 0 for 2. Chance to bring this to a one point game. And she misses. Andrea Salazar back on the offensive side for the Mountaineers. Sullivan and McPherson back on the defensive side for Dallas as Dallas gets the offensive rebound. Alvarez missing the putback attempt. As we approach two and a half minutes to go. Mountaineers with the ball. Hernandez. Miles now into the middle, trying to get by Harden. Ball on the floor, and we're going to have a kick ball on Dallas, it looks like. Ball out of bounds for the Mountaineers. Looking at our game reset, both teams are in the bonus. Both teams have one foul, excuse me, one timeout left. And the possession arrow currently pointing to the Mountaineers. Ball inbounded to Vallejo. Now Hernandez. Vallejo for three. Knocks it in. And one. Nineteen points now for Miranda Vallejo. who up until her last couple of shots, most of those points have come fairly quietly. But she's hit a couple of big threes here in this last quarter. Converts the four-point play, gives Schreiner a seven-point lead with 2.12 to go, and that's going to be turned over. Thrown out of bounds by McPherson. as Camille Fowler will come in for Alvarez. <laughs> Jumper from the elbow by, by Vallejo misses. Harden with the rebound. McPherson loses it after pressure on a double team by the Mountaineers, and that's going to be a foul on, I think, Imani Harden. It was on Harden. That's going to be Harden's fourth foul. And Sinai McPherson is on the floor. Looks like maybe just a cramp. We have seven... Seven point game, a minute 50 to go. And 
and Schreiner a chance to add a couple of more as I think it's going to be Eliza Peralta who's going to be going to the line. McPherson standing up now. Limping towards the sideline, but generally she looks okay. I think, again, it was just a cramp. As two free throws are about to be on the way for Peralta. One for two in the game so far. First one up and in. And hits them both. Sullivan gets stuck. Harden into the corner, pass to Turner. She's going to be fouled, and she's going to get a chance for three. So three free throws on the way. First one is in. It's the second one. Amber Turner shooting 47.8% from the free throw line this year. 22 of 46. And she goes three for three right here. Three very big free throws for Dallas. As it's a six-point game. Dallas needing a couple of stops right here. Give themselves a chance. Dallas looks like they're now playing man-to-man. -man. They've abandoned the zone. And oh, Hernandez was wide open underneath and nobody saw her. And it's going to be turned over by Salazar. I don't know if somebody missed an assignment, but Jocelyn Hernandez was wide open on the weak side and creeped into the middle. Could have had an easy two points for Schreiner had they saw her. Shot for three, is in by Peralta. Nine point game with under 53 seconds to go. And that's 11 points now for Peralta. Uh, I said that possessions for the Crusaders down the stretch were going to be a big part if they were to win this game. And since then, they've actually turned the ball over three times. Schreiner has two. Schreiner has also had three turnovers. Since I mentioned the differential earlier, it's 25 turnovers for Dallas to 13 for Schreiner. But it has seemed as if the big difference since then has been just the general shot quality by the Mountaineers. As the first free throw is in by Alvarez, particularly 
three-pointers, and Schreiner has hit several of those in the last two, three minutes of this game. As Amber Turner will foul Peralta. So Dallas down by seven, trying to elongate the rest of this game, try and give themselves a chance. As the first free throw is hit by Peralta, that makes her four, four for five on the evening. And she hits them both. And that's going to be another takeaway for the Mountaineers as McPherson lost the ball. She will foul Peralta. And that's going to be the third foul on McPherson. Another made free throw by Peralta. Second one up and in. 11-point game as the Crusaders get it up to McPherson. Pump fakes the three, now takes one, misses. And that's going to be a foul immediately by Turner as Vallejo will be going to the line. She's one for one in the game. Camille Fowler about to check in for McPherson. First free throw is made. Twenty one points now for Miranda Vallejo. And knocks them both through. Schreiner still offering full court pressure, and that's going to be a foul on Vallejo. Ninety-one eighty hour score. Dallas trying to steal and not foul. As the Mountaineers are just dribbling it around, waiting for the clock to wind its way down. And the Mountaineers have won. So our final score, the Mountaineers of Shriner University, 91, the University of Dallas Crusaders, 80. And so here are our final game numbers. For the Mountaineers, they had 91 points on 34 of 76 shooting, 9 of 27 from the three-point line, and 14 of 17 from the foul line. For Dallas, they had 80 points on 24 of 50 shooting, 10 of 18 from the three-point line, and 22 of 33 from the foul line. 
for the Mountaineers, they had 13 turnovers, 30 rebounds, 8 offensives, 12, uh, 22 defensives, 24 assists, no block shots, 15 steals, and 21 fouls. For the Crusaders, they had 26 turnovers, 33 rebounds, 5 offensive, 28 defensive, 19 assists, 5 block shots, 6 steals, and 20 fouls. Our individual game leaders tonight, Sonia McPherson led all scorers with 25 points, 5 of 8 from the field, 4 of 6 from 3, 11 of 12 from the foul line. And I think without a doubt in terms of efficiency, this was by far McPherson's best game. Shooting over 60% from both the field and from deep and over 90% from the foul line. Looking at the rest of the rest of her games this season, this is actually the first time this season McPherson has shot over 50% from the field. She had a 45% game against TLU on the on January 21st. And her very first game against the Turno, she shot 44.4. And she's she's shot better than 35% four times this year from the three-point line and had one 40% game. That was against Southwestern on the 1st of February. But nothing like she's done tonight. 62% from the field, 66.7% from three, and 11 of 12, 91.7 from the foul line. Anyway, the other big scorers in the game, Miranda Vallejo, the top scorer for Schreiner, 22 points on 8 of 14 shooting, 3 of 6 from the 3-point line, and a perfect 3 of 3 from the foul line. Our other big scorers, Adrian Alvarez, also had 22 points on 7 of 14 shooting, 4 of 6 from the 3-point line, and 4 of 8 from the free throw line. Demoria Miles, 21 points on 8 of 17, 4 of 9, and 1 of 1. And Peralta, the other double-digit scorer for Schreiner, 15 points on 3 of 4, 2 of 2, and 7 of 8. Sullivan also had 15 points on 6 of 10, 1 of 2, and 2 of 2. And Imani Hardin with 10 points on 4 of 6, no 3s, and 2 of 6 from the line. Our top rebounder in the game was also Imani Harden, who just missed having a double-double. She had nine rebounds in the game. Peralta, eight rebounds, leading for the Mountaineers. McPherson and Pirtle, each with six assists apiece, leading their respective teams. Vallejo, Miles and Naraya Bugs leading the game with three steals each. Harden, the team leader for Dallas with two steals, and the game leader in block shots with three. So with the win tonight, the Mountaineers Improve their record to nine and five. Dallas down to two and twelve. Overall record for Shriner improves to twelve and eleven. Dallas down to five and seventeen. And we'll take one final look at our SCAC scoreboard, see if there's any new scores listed. I don't think there are. No, there are no other games reporting in, it looks like, except for...
for our other women's basketball game, which was Southwestern and Trinity. Trinity won that one 93 to 63. And so, as we take a look at the remaining schedule for Dallas, they will conclude the season next weekend on the 18th and the 20th with a road game against Shriner and then a home game against Trinity. Those game times will be at 7.30 and 3. And that will be the end of the season for the Crusaders. And so... That will be it from here. Once again, our final score, Shriner wins over Dallas, 91 to 80. I'm Kevin McGurk. Thank you for joining us tonight, and we'll see you next time.